Jesus. Please let's rise to our feet for our opening prayers. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 118 verse 24, Psalm 118 verse 24, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to rejoice in the Lord by lifting up your voice and telling God how happy you are to be here today, to be alive, to be in his presence. Lift up your voice and tell him you are glad. It is the day the Lord has made. Our own role is to be glad, is to rejoice in it. Let's give God praise. Let's rejoice in this day. Somebody just lift up your voice and tell him, Daddy, I'm grateful uh, for making me even to see uh, even this Sunday. Uh, Lord, I'm grateful. Uh, another Christmas is by the corner, and I'm grateful to you, Lord. Father, I'm grateful. Uh, we want to just sing of his glory, uh, because indeed he is a joy to the whole world. Uh, are we ready to just give him worship this morning? Huh? Father, we just want to declare. Mm -hmm. I will sing of your glory. I will show forth your beauty. If I shout, it will be enough. If I dance, it will be enough. I will sing of your glory. I will show forth your beauty. If I shout, it will be enough. If I dance, it will be enough. For you are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful for all situations. You are the joy of the whole world. For you are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful for all situations. You are the joy of the whole world. Speaks of your glory and your hand of your goodness. Your love is new every morning, and your faithfulness is ever true. The heaven speaks of your glory and the head of your beauty. Your love is new every morning, and your faithfulness is ever sure. For you are the great and mighty God. Oh, Say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. 
Are you ready? We want to join the heavens to declare Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Because the king is born. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise is rising.
children are singing. Children are singing. Hosanna. Not the voices. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna. Let me hear you. Jump to the heavens to declare Hosanna.
are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Indeed, Father, you are mighty on your throne. There is none like you, ancient of days. I am that I am, the beginning and the end. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. And indeed, because you are mighty on your throne, everything that concerns your children will be mighty in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Thank you, everybody, for coming. You may have your seat. Testimony time is overcomer's time. We have a testimony here today, and I'll just read it. The Lord is so good, and there is no iota of evil in him. All my life, God has been too faithful to fail me. He has been so faithful to my family. Through the thick and thin, through the sorrows and the pains, he showed me so much mercy, much more than I deserved. Even when I had thought all hope was lost, he stepped in, calmed every storm, sent me help, turned my life around, and caused me to rejoice forevermore. I'm so grateful for his reckless love over me and his abundant grace at work in my life. I have enjoyed his supernatural favor in every dimension and unusual strength, health, and vitality. What more can I say to this God who has kept me for the past 40 years? Hallelujah. I have come to give back to you, Lord, all the glory, honor, and adoration. This God is too much. I also want to say thank you, Lord, for blessing me with a wonderful family, Jesus' house story. I do not take it for granted at all. Lord, I am grateful. And that testimony, Sister P, let us pray that that testimony will be permanent in her life. Let us pray that the new year of 40 will bring birth new things and great things in her life in the mighty name of Jesus. And let us pray for all of us sitting here that indeed the blessing that he has extended to Sister P will be on each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We will have our testimonies and we will testify and it will be big and all glory and honor will be ascribed unto the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we're afraid. Happy Sunday to all of you. Thank you for sitting beautifully in our auditorium. It is Christmas, the right is Sunday, and indeed, we're looking Christmassy. So we have some presentations that we have prepared for you to enjoy this beautiful day. It's going to be a glorious day, so please do not sit down. Thank God the church is very warm, so there's no cold. You need to shake your body, okay? Okay, so we have some presentations. We're going to have three presentations from the teenagers, the children, and the choir. So the video will be played. Please engage and don't, this is, you know. <laughs> okay, so the video will be played just now. So let's um, be happy. Let's enjoy. It's Christmas, and Jesus is the reason for the season, so we have to be happy. Okay. from 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 and then verses 6 to 16 to 23 using good news translation and it reads see how much the father has loved us his love is so great that we are called God's children and so in fact we are this is why the world does not know us it, it has not known God 
My dear friends, we are now God's children, but it is not yet clear what we shall become. But we know that when God appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he truly is. Everyone who has his, this hope in Christ keeps himself pure, just as Christ is pure. 16 to 23. This is how we know what love is. Christ gave his life for us. We too then ought to give our life for others. If we are rich and see others in need, yet close our hearts against them, how can we claim that we love God? My children, our love shall not just be words and talk. It must be true love, which is shown in action. This then is how we will know that we belong to the truth. This is how we will be confident in God's presence. If our conscience condemns us, we know that God is greater than our conscience and that he knows everything. And so, my dear friends, if our conscience does not condemn, condemn us, we have courage in God's presence. We receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do as he pleases. This, what he commands is what we believe in what he commands is that we believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as Christ commands us. Thank you for listening. Merry Christmas. And Daddy Emmy. I didn't know. Now, today we're going to be doing a Christmas presentation, and I hope you like it. Now, let's get to it. Isaiah 9 6. For once was a child is born, for once was a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and the name shall be called Wonderful, Cantal, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. The Son of God, the Savior of the world, has been born unto us. Humanity's hope has been found in its miraculous birth. The spirit of Christmas became flesh. This is worthy of praise for every cell in your body. When we lose sight of the heart behind Christmas and the celebration becomes still, recite this verse and Declare Jesus as your counselor, father, and peace giver. Say it with excitement and exclamation. Bye bye. Have, Have a, a Merry, Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching.
God bless our children and all those presentations from the choir. We are grateful for that. It's a joyous day. Please feel the presence of God. Feel the gladness in his presence. This time we'll be going into our tithes and offerings. As I read from the book of 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 7. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 7. Very quickly. ESV version. The Bible says the point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So cheerfully, if you had determined in your heart to give your tithes, please um, rise to your feet as we pray for the tithes. If you have your tithe or if you've given it over the week or if you've given it o online, we want to pray for the tithes very quickly. Is there anyone in our midst paying tithe? God bless you. Please, can we bow our heads together as we pray for them? According to the word of the Lord, Father, these ones have done according to your word. And we pray for them, Lord, that that which they have offered, as you said, it will return to them a, thou a, a thousandfold, Lord, let it be. Open the windows of heaven, Lord, and pour your blessings that their, their treasure house will not be able to contain anymore. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you bless their handiwork. Whatever they are doing from which they have paid their tithe from, Lord, bless and increase it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And for all of us, as many have, as have decided as well to give our offerings online, on ground, if you have your offering, um, a video will be played after now on how you can make your donations online. If you want to give it on ground, there will be some bowls around. You can drop it on there. For those online, please remember you would see the link on how to give follow duly. So we'll see a video played after, and after which we'll have the men's fellowship presentation, women's fellowship presentation, special presentation from Deacon um, Shola Okunoga, and the youth fellowship will bring us the word. Let's pray for everyone that will be offering, giving their offerings today. In Jesus' name, our Father and our Lord, we thank you for this offering that we bring into your presence. Cheerfully and gladly, as your word has commanded, we have brought. Father, let this be a sweet-smelling savor unto you. Let blessings return to every pot and every treasure house where this has come from. We pray for as many who do not have to give, who desire but do not have. Lord, that you provide for them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, awesome Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Please, the video will be played. Watch, and then you'll know how to give. God bless you. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says, Mary's young son, Jesus Christ, was born. Hello, everyone, and I hope you're having a nice time in the presence of the Lord. It's Christmas again, and Jesus is the reason for the season. It is the season to share love and happiness all over the world. And at a time like this, we need to come together, look out for one another, and be our brother's keeper. The church has created a breakfast club, after school lessons, and visiting the vulnerable. If this is of interest to you, please join the church using your tithes and love offerings to share love and happiness all over the world, using any of the following methods. Number one, if you're sitting in the church auditorium, please look out for the white envelopes on your seats, and then follow the instructions of the ushers. And number two, Facebook. Please search for Jesus House Story and click on Shop Now and then follow the instructions. Website on jesushousestory.org and click on give online and then follow the instructions. Four, if a bank transfer is easier for you. Please send your donations using the account details displayed on the screen now. Number 
five, you can send a text message to the different phone numbers depending on the amount. God bless you as you give. From all of us at Jesus House Story, we are wishing you a Merry Christmas. God bless you. Good morning everybody and welcome to today's Family Sunday. I'll be reading of one of the Bible scriptures for this service and it's taken from Luke chapter 2 from verse 6 to 11. The book of Luke chapter 2 from verse 6 to 11. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, And when they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared amongst them and the radiance of God's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. On behalf of all the men of Jesus House Tory, we would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2021. God bless you all. See you in 2021. Amen. Yo!
all the women in Jesus' house story. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We are wishing every member of Jesus' house story a Merry Christmas. God bless you. Hallelujah. Church is a great opportunity to be with you this morning at the Christmas Variety Service. I'll be doing a song titled to Reckless Love, and I pray that as we listen, we would experience the love of God in this season and beyond in the name of Jesus. Have a very Merry Christmas. <laughs>
Jesus' name we've worshipped. Please let's have our seats. Good morning, church. I would like to especially welcome each and every one of us to this Christmas family variety service. And I am sure that we've been blessed by the presentation so far. Um, it's time for the word, and um, let's, let's just close our eyes to pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for another opportunity to be gathered together to hear your word. We thank you, O oh God, because you are the reason for the season. We thank you for your love that has made it possible, O oh God, for us to be participants and to be partakers of your salvation. May your name be highly exalted, O oh God. Even as we dig into your word, we ask that you would teach us. We ask that you would inspire us and we ask that you would give unto us understanding. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. So today, um, I'll be taking the word on behalf of the youth. I would firstly like to thank the pastorate for the opportunity to um, take the word. I do not take it for granted, and um, God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. Today, we are considering the topic of his love, his love being the love of God. And our team text is taken from the book of John chapter 3, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him. The book, the dictionary defines love as a great interest or a great pleasure in someone or in something. So if we are to apply that definition to the, this context, we are going to say, for God to had a great interest or a great pleasure in the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, there are eight different kinds of love. And the, the, the kind of love, which is our focus of today, is agape love. Agape love is the God kind of love. And this kind of love is, is known as the unconditional or the selfless love. What do we mean by unconditional love? Unconditional love means um, a love that has no condition attached. It means that um, it's a love that is regardless of, of what we deserve what we um, have done or what of how we are to respond to the love it's not a love that is because we have done something to deserve it it is a, it is an unconditional love because we have not done anything to deserve it and selfless love on the other hand also means something similar but it means you know that it's a love that is not self partaking it basically means that um, god sent his son god out of his love, sent his son to die for us, not because of what he could gain out of it, but so that we, the recipients of the love, can, you know, have everlasting life. We see the uncon an example of the unconditionality of God's love in the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, but God demonstrates his love in the New King James Version. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ, um, God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners. So in this context, we are saying that Christ, you know, God sent his son to die for us regardless of the fact that we were sinners. That is an unconditional love. And we see an example of um, a selfless love in the book of John chapter 15 verse 13. It says, no one has greater love no stronger commitment than to lay down his life for his own friends. In order for one to lay down their life for their own friends, they have to first put the interest of their friend above their own friend. And this is what um, a selfless kind of love means. It's the kind of love that you do regardless of what you yourself will benefit out of it. The next part of the lesson for today is the characteristics of God's love. We'll be considering the various characteristics of God's love. And if we look at the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, it says, for God so loved the world, John chapter 3 verse 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In that, we find the first characteristics of God's, characteristic of God's love, which is um, 
sacrificial love. He gave his only begotten son, sacrifice. And the emphasis on the word only begotten son means that, you know, it was not a giving that was out of convenience. It was a giving regardless of, you know, the fact that it was his only son. He regardless, you know, went ahead and gave his only son for our sake that we might have everlasting life. The emphasis here is on the sacrificial love of God. And that is the first characteristic of God's love. It is sacrificial. We, if, if I should give an example of this um, kind of sacrificial love of God, you know, I can only imagine that if we as human beings, we have five children, and there is a person who has committed a heinous crime, perhaps murder, and he is to be um, sentenced to death, would you give one of your child for the sake of that one person that you know has committed a crime, he deserves the punishment. Will you give up one of your own child just so that that person can be saved? I don't think any human can do that, but that is what God did, to, did for us. And that is an unconditional and a selfless kind of love. The other characteristics of love that we can find in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 4 to verse 8. 1 Corinthians from verse 4 to verse 8. It says, love endures patience and kindness. Love endures patience and kindness. And what does it mean to be patient? To be patient simply means, you know, capacity to accept. It means capacity to endure difficult circumstances. It means, you know, a capacity to be able to tolerate without getting angry, without being easily angered. You know, and this is one of the characteristics of God's love. If we are to, if we are to um, manifest God's love on earth here, then we must have this quality, which is patience, be able to be patient with our fellow humans, and even be patient with God, because sometimes it can be easy to think of patience in terms of our relationship with man, whereas sometimes, you know, you are believing God for something, and God hasn't shown up, God hasn't done anything about it, and sometimes we resort to self-help, that's impatience, and it's out of the lack of love, you know, for God. Another characteristic of God's love is kindness. Kindness means, you know, the quality. It's same from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Kindness, it means the quality of being generous and considerate. The quality of being generous and considerate. If we look at the book of um, Matthew chapter 25, from verse 36 to 37, it says, I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will say, Lord... When did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? If we go down to verse 40, it says, The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you did it for me. This is one of the characteristics of God's love, kindness. Kindness to our fellow brethren on earth. And it's not just about brothers within the household of faith. It also reflects or goes beyond that. It goes to the extent of um, kindness towards even those outside of the body of Christ. If we are able to manifest the kindness of God towards them, we manifest the love of God towards them. And even through that, we can draw them, you know, into the um, bosom of this um, love of God. Other characteristics of um, the love of God, which we would find in the same 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4 to 8. It says, love does not envy. It says, love is not proud. Love does not delight in evil. Love endureth all. Love does not rejoice in injustice, but rejoices with the truth. And if we look at verse 8, the last part, it says, love, um, love is eternal, which means that love does not fail. Love never ends. It's um, everlasting. Now we'll move on to the next part of the lesson of today, which is how do we respond to God's love, our response to God's love. We know that God's love means, we know that love means that it means a great interest, that God had a great interest in us such that he sent his son that we might receive salvation. So how do we respond to this love of God? And we find that again in the book of John chapter 3 from verse 16. John chapter 3 from verse 16. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, that's, there's our response, you know, believing that God sent his son, you know, to die for our sake, that we might have everlasting life. So the first response to God's love is, um, is to believe that God actually sent his son, that we might have everlasting life. And the next step after believing, we find in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 15, 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. 
It says, whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he is in God. And the, I think the um, Amplified Version says, whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he is God. And if you see in the book of First John chapter 4, there's um, 8, I think towards the end, it says that God is love. So whoever acknowledges that um, Jesus is the son of God, we receive this love of God. Because say God abides in him and if God is love, it means that by accept, a- acknowledging that Jesus um, is the son of God, we accept this love into our own hearts. The third way to respond to God's love is by reciprocating the love of God. Reciprocating the love of God. That is in the book of Mark chapter 12, verse 30. The book of Mark chapter 12, verse um, 13. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. This is one of the ways through which we can reciprocate the love of God by responding, you know, with our love. And the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, it tells us that we love God because he first loved us. This verse of the Bible emphasizes the point that our love to God is only a reciprocation of the love that he first showed unto us. So by, uh, we can respond to, the, to God's love by reciprocating God's um, love as well. Now, the question is, how do we reciprocate God's love? If we respond to God's love by reciprocating God's love, the question becomes, how? How do we reciprocate this love of God? And we find this in the book of John chapter 14, verse 15. John 14, 15 answers this question. It says, if you love me, you would obey my commandments. That is the way you respond to God's love. You respond to God's love by obeying his commandments. And what is his commandment? We find in the book of Mark chapter 12, verse 30 and 31. It tells us Mark chapter 12, 30 and 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the 31 says, the second most important commandment is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment more important than this. And if the Bible says we respond to God's love by, um, by obeying his commandment, and his commandment in turn says we should love God, you know, it begs the question, why love, 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 love? If we check in the book of, of Romans chapter 13, verse 10, it says that love does no wrong. It never hurts anyone. Therefore, unselfish love is the fulfillment of the law. What this means simply means is that, you know, if we love our neighbors, if we love our neighbor or love God, it simply means that you will be just to your neighbor. It simply means that, you know, you would not do, cause any harm to your neighbor. And in like manner, if you love God, you would want to do everything to please God. And that is why the way we reciprocate God's love is by loving him back. Because loving him back means, in turn, that we would obey each and every other of of his law. That is why it says, therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And the last way by which we reciprocate God's love is um, found in the book of John chapter 21 from verse 15 to 17. John chapter 21 from verse 15 to 17. It says in that passage of the Bible, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Judah, do you love me more than this? He said, he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. When we refer to um, feed my lambs, other versions of the Bible says feed my sheep. In the book of John chapter 10, verse 27, we see that um, the, when the word sheep is used, it's, it refers to believers, it refers to people in the household of faith. But it does not you know, end there. Reciprocating God's love also means that we could you know, go out there and share the love of God to others. We could go out there and bring others you know, into this love of God. That is another way by which we can reciprocate the love of God. Lastly, we are going to consider what are the benefits of responding to God's love. Why should we respond to God's love? We've considered first that the love of God, that love means to have a great interest or a great pleasure in someone. And in the context of the Bible, it means that God had a great interest in the world such that he sent his son, you know, that we might have everlasting life. That is what um, love means. And we also saw that the characteristics of love, you know, is... Love is, on, is a sacrificial thing. It does not seek um, its own interest. It's, self, um, it's um, selfless. We also saw that love is kind, it's patient, and all the rest of that. And we've also looked at, you know, 
um, how to respond to God's love by believing, by accepting, and also by um, reciprocating God's love, which in turn means you know, love your neighbors, love God, and also sharing the love of God to others. Now we are going to look at the last part of this message, which is the benefits of responding to God's love. What are the benefits of responding to God's love? We'll go back to the book of John chapter 3, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the last part of, the, of that text is the benefits of responding to God's love, everlasting life, eternal life, life that transcends beyond, you know, the, the life that we live here on earth. That is the number one benefit and the most important benefit, actually, of responding to God's love. The next benefit of responding to God's love we will find in the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, the Amplified Version. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived and deluded and misled. God will not allow himself to be snared at, scorned, disdained, or mocked by mere pretensions or profess, profess, professions or by his precepts being set aside. He inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. For whatsoever a man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. Another benefit of, um, of, um, of um, the love of God is when we reciprocate the love of God by showing love to our fellow humans, by um, reciprocating God's love, by showing love to God himself, we are planting a seed of love. And that seed of love will germinate, it will bear fruit, and we would reap the fruit, which is also love. So in, the same, in like manner, if you, if you sow the opposite of love, that is the same thing that you would reap. So that's another benefit of responding to God's love. And the last benefit of responding to God's love is in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Deuteronomy, chapter 28. We first of all consider, remember we considered that um, responding to God's love means reciprocating his love. And reciprocating his love also means showing love to, um, reciprocating God's love means obeying his commandments, which is showing love, the first commandment to God, and then the second commandment, showing love to um, our neighbors, as you love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is a commandment. So if you look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, it says, now it shall be, if you diligently listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all of his commandments, which I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and blessings will come upon you and overtake you. If you pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God, you will be blessed in the city. He goes ahead to list other blessings, more and more blessings. So this is the, the final um, benefit that I have here of responding to the love of God. In, in return, you know, you receive numerous blessings from God, which you find in the book of Deuteronomy chapter from verse 1 to 13. There are um, numerous blessings of God that is listed there. And by way of conclusion, by way of conclusion, the Bible says in the book of First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, it said, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have no charity, I am a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. What does it mean for us? It means, you know, the love of God, as we've, as we've studied throughout the course of today, is the foundation of our Christian faith. It's the foundation, you know, of um, Christianity. So I just want to encourage us that as we celebrate the season, as we celebrate in this season of Christmas, we should remember, you know, that the reason for the season is the love of God. And we should also go ahead and reciprocate this love to those around us, to our neighbors, and also to God. Praise the Lord. I just want us to bow our heads in one minute and, and just just ask God to plant his love af afresh in our hearts. That in this season, even as we go ahead to celebrate um, the reason for the season, the love of God, that God's love will be planted in our hearts afresh. Praise the Lord. Prayers in the name of Jesus. Loves me, I cannot see why. Let's keep praying. He loves me, I cannot see why. On Calvary tree, he suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot say why. 
while we are praying, we want to give opportunity to anyone and everyone, either inside this building or watching us in this service, you want to respond to the love of God. What manner of love is this that a man should give his own life for his friend? God doesn't see you just as his child. He sees you as his friend. And he wants you to draw closer to him as you respond to that love. So you have never said a prayer like this. Lord Jesus, I hand over my life to you. I give you my heart. And I want you to be my Lord and Savior. You have the opportunity to say this type of prayer today because this is responding to the love of God. So you, you are here in the service. You want to open up your heart. You want to allow Jesus into your heart. Kindly please put your right hand on your chest. If you are online, you can also do the same. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I can assure you that you are not the worst sinner, but you are a sincere person that is responding into this call. And I believe God that sees your sincerity is going to bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. So please, those with their hands on their chest, please say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. Kindly forgive me all my sins. Wash me, Lord, with your blood. And write my name in the book of life. From today, I give my heart to you. And I ask that you grant me the grace to serve you all the days of my life. Now I declare that I am born again. I'm now a child of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I please pray for us? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your sons and daughters that have responded to this call, that you will bless them and you will keep them to the end. They will not fail, they will not falter. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are not ashamed that you prayed that prayer. I want you to wave your hand around me. If you pray that prayer, please just wave your hand with me. Hallelujah. God bless you in the name of Jesus. One of our ministers will be in touch with you. I saw my brother here pray that prayer. Please, let's make sure that we reach out to him. How beautiful it is at a young age to respond to Jesus. Can we please just celebrate the Lord one more time? Hallelujah. Amen. On behalf of the entire pastorate and leadership of Jesus Our Story, I want to wish each and every one of us a wonderful, glorious, marvelous, awesome, amazing Christmas. Hallelujah. I can tell you something. This will be your best Christmas in the name of Jesus. Despite, you know, what is going around and what is going on, this will still be your best Christmas in Jesus' name. Is somebody going to say, this will be my best Christmas in the name of Jesus? And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. And I think for those set of presentations from beginning to the end, can we please appreciate everyone that presented? <laughs> Hallelujah. And for a powerful word from one of our youth, can we please just celebrate Sister Esther? Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. We want to welcome, we know we have in the house today some special people in our midst. We are all special, I'm sure we know that. All looking great, amazing, and Christmassy. Hallelujah. But we know that some people are in this auditorium for the first time. And in our way and custom of love, we want to appreciate them. We want to celebrate them. We want to know that we recognize that you are in our midst and you are in this service. So please, if today is your very, very first Sunday, even if you had been here any other time, but this is your first Sunday in this auditorium, 
We want to recognize you. We want to welcome you. We want to celebrate you. We also want to show you our love. So can you please just wave your hands above your head? Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you don't mind. Oh, okay. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. The Lord King of glory that brought you will cause the blessing of his house to rest and abide with you and your family in the name of Jesus. Your stepping in, into this house shall be a blessing, shall be a, a lifting, shall be a promotion for you in the name of Jesus. And we agree with you that the best Christmas gift ever that no man can give, the God of heaven and earth will give to you in the name of Jesus. You're welcome to Jesus' our story. I believe that when we share the grace, some of our ministers will be in touch with us and um, they will show us our love. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Just going into the announcement by the grace of God, Tuesday we are here to have the, um, our word and communion service. And it has always been a blessing. And this one will not be an exception. So we are here on Tuesday, 6.30. And let's make it a date. And the God of heaven and earth will bless us as we come in the name of Jesus. Praise God forevermore. The consideration of uh, the, the subject we are looking on Tuesday is ending in praise. Somebody says ending in praise. So shall it be for us in the name of Jesus. Also, let's remember that prayers, prayers, prayers go go on every blessed day on the Zoom platform. And from this day, if you count today to 31st, it is 12 days. So we are started praying for the 12 months that we have in 2021. So please, any of those times, make it a date with God. Let us speak and declare into the new year. Hallelujah. 12 days, 12 months, 12 days of prayers. Hallelujah. And the Lord God of heaven and earth will make it so in Jesus' name. Also, Sunday next week is our prophetic entry and declaration service. What does that mean? 2021 prophetic entry and declaration service. So by the grace of God, next Sunday we are going to be unveiling what God is saying to us as a house about 2021. And you don't want to miss that. Praise God forevermore. You also want to come next Sunday and speak into your 2021. So please, let us not take this for granted. I noticed last Sunday, was that the anointing service, that few people came with the anointing oil. When we give announcement, please remind yourself by setting reminder on your phone and all that. So I'm about to say that when you are coming next Sunday, come with your heart desire for the new year. Because we are going to be speaking over them. Praise God. How many believe in the power of declaration? How many believe in the power of prayer? How many believe that God answers prayer? So please write those things that you want God to do in 2021 and bring them next Sunday. And I know that God will breathe upon them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed coming to church today? I want us to please rise on our feet if there are other announcements. We'll get them across to us in the course of the week. Hallelujah. I want you to give glory, give praise, give honor, give adoration to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Tell him you are grateful. Tell him you love him just as he has loved you. We've heard so much about his love. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you honor. Father, we give you adoration. We give you worship. No one like you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Your love is kind. Your love is patient. You fill my heart. With so much peace and love, you're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. Your love is kind. 
Your love is kind. Your love is patient. Your love is patient. You feel my heart. You feel my heart. With so much, with so much peace and joy, your amazing, your amazing. You make my life, you make my life. Jesus, Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Oh, too much, oh. Jesus, you love me too much. Jesus, you love me too much. Too much, oh, too much, oh. Thanks, thanks. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh. Thank you for loving me. Jesus has story. Can we celebrate this God? Mashada la 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 la. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh. Two more times. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. I speak over your life and family as you go from here. The love of God like never before will be revealed to you in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you turn, you will enjoy the love of God. You will enjoy the blessings of God. You will enjoy the favor of God. You will enjoy the mercies of God in the name of Jesus. This week that your heart desire, the Lord by his love is granting it in the name of Jesus. The door you least expected, the God of heaven and earth will open them to you in the name of Jesus. When you come back this time next week, you are coming back with your testimony. I decree and declare to you your life and family, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lost in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. This message Together. has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout the United Kingdom and the world. If you would like to support us, kindly visit our website on www.jesushousestory.org. God bless you.